Very good morning to all our dear listeners. Welcome to ACFIM Talks, yet in addition to today, the 25th of February 2022. And today we discuss iPod and the rumblings on public funding to political parties. I will be introducing my panelists uh, in uh, about a minute or two. But before we get started, let me take this opportunity to invite everybody out there to join us and be part of this discussion. Uh, we also ask you to subscribe to all our social media platforms, uh, both at on Twitter, the Actium Ando, and also on our YouTube channel. You'll be getting the notifications, including uh, our Facebook page, so that you can be part of the discussions. You send in your your questions and also your contributions to a very interesting topic today. Let me start this way: that the last two weeks. Uh, it has been drama within the opposition camp, and the main cast being DPs, Nobat Mao, and the new big boys, Noop. Noop is a national unity platform. The public grants are mainly stemming from the 23 billion that was shared between NRM, um, NRM taking 17 billion, Noop taking 1.3 billion, FDC. Um, taking 1.7 billion, DP and UP sharing 485 each, and also German and PPP getting 106 billion each. Mao has since called no hypocrites, having benefited from the 23 billion, which apparently came out of a negotiated process within iPod. A space Noop has shunned with some reasons the party advances. Also, the president proposed that only political parties participating in iPod should benefit from public funding. This and much more forms the basis of our discussion today. And with me, allow me to introduce an all-male panel and apologies, no pun intended. Um, we will do better next time. But for today, let us have uh, this discussion with only male in the house, starting with, uh, I think I should be having Osinde on set. Osinde, I can't see you, but starting with Frank Rusa, who is the current country representative for Netherlands Institute for Party Democracy. And this is the host to the Interparty Organization for Dialogue IPO, the platform that brings together political parties with representation in parliament. In that Rusa serves as the executive secretary for the iPod platform. Frank, you're most welcome. Thank you, and good morning uh, to you and to all who are viewing us and engaged in this discussion this morning. All right. Um, next, I want to introduce uh, Osinde. Osinde, yes, you, I, I can now see you. I can now see you. Michael Orash Osinde, who is the cabinet member of the Uganda People's Party, uh, the, the one of the oldest parties in the land. Michael Osinde is also the chairperson for the legal committee of the National Consultative Forum, a constitutional platform that brings together all registered political parties in Uganda. He's a lawyer by training and practice. He's also the chairperson of the Human Rights Bureau at UPC. Michael, it's good to have you again at Actium Talks. It's a pleasure being with you, and especially seeing my brother. Uh, some two months. Is a... Okay, Michael, you seem to be having a bit me? of a bite in the connection, but I think we'll fix that. Um, our next panelist, who is no stranger on set, uh, is Henry Muguzi, who is an electoral democracy expert an anti-corruption activist and a researcher with a niche on money in politics. He's also the executive director of Alliance for Finance Monitoring, a Pan-African society organization that works on monitoring money in politics. Henry, you much very welcome to Action Talks. Yeah, uh, colleagues, uh, our viewers, uh, always a, a pleasure for me to be here and uh, good morning uh, uh, from where you are joining us from. Okay. All right. Um, I want to start with Michael here, and I, I unfortunately is off, but uh, 
let me wait for Michael to get back on set because I have a question that I think would be very important. Michael attacks it before any other. But as I wait for Michael, let me uh, probably throw this question to Frank. Uh, Frank, what is the genesis of public funding of political parties? There's this whole confusion between, between within the public about, if we are calling it iPod money, and then we know there's public party financing, public party financing, uh, public, fund, fi public funding of, pub, of, of political parties, and people are confusing those two. Give us a genesis. Uh, thank you very much uh, to you, Felix. Actually, I'm glad that you've asked that question first. I was hoping that we begin with that question, because if we don't get that clear, eh, we're going to have problems. So I thank you so much uh, that technology has given me the chance to go first, because I wanted that clear first. So public funding for political parties was not provided for in the Constitution of Uganda. It was only introduced into the laws of Uganda after a discussion was held in an informal platform called iPod in 2010. Political parties with representation in parliament signed a memorandum of understanding to begin the interparty organization for dialogue sometime in 2010. And among the first key things they discussed was the need to introduce public funding for political parties as it is done in many other jurisdictions. Those conversations culminated into the amendment of the Public Political Parties and Organizations Act 2010, amending section 14 thereof to provide for public funding for political parties for the very first time. Since 2011 to date, every year, there has been money allocated to political parties with representation in parliament that has been allocated by the Uganda Electoral Commission in accordance with the formula that are set out under section 14A of the Political Parties and Organizations Act. The law does not specify how much money should go to the parties. The law only talks about how the money that is allocated to political parties should be apportioned among them. And it says that during elections, it should be equal to all political parties with representation in parliament. And outside election time, it should be allocated depending on the numerical strength of each and political party represented in parliament. That has been the position. However, over time, there have been two major disputes or complaints or points of discussion that have arisen in relation to political party funding. One of them has been that the formula that is in the law is not fair, that there is a need to amend the law to adopt a more equitable formula for sharing of public funding to political parties. Some political parties that are not in iPod or that are not in parliament have also complained and said we should have funding for all political parties. Those in iPod have complained and said the method of money that is distributed to the money to the political parties in parliament is not fair. It needs to be reviewed. The second issue that has been complained about over the years has been the fact that uh, the, political, the available funding for political parties is limited. 10 billion shillings for five political parties in the 10th parliament was considered to be low. Even beyond the formula, they were saying some money is low, it needs to be increased. All these discussions about changing the formula of, of sharing, increasing the funding available, were discussed in the informal umbrella arrangement called Interparty Organization for Dialogue. So one of the, in the summit of 2019, it was unanimously agreed that there is a need to increase this funding from 10 billion to 35 billion. It was also agreed that the formula to distribute this money should be amended so that 15% of this money can be shared equally for those who are eligible for administrative costs. Because the reasoning is big and small parties all have admin costs. They have to pay for rent, they have to service their cars, they have to pay salaries, 
they have to pay statutory obligations, etc., etc. And then they agreed that another 15% should be given to the, allocated to the iPod Secretariat for joint activities to promote the strength of political parties, dialogue, act, activities, and other things that iPod does that benefit all members of iPod. Then the 70% was to be dis, dis, distributed according to numerical strength. That is what was agreed upon in iPod Summit of 2019. Unfortunately, the agreements of the iPod Summit were never translated into law. The law was never amended to capture the aspirations of the discussions in the iPod summits. However, one of the things that was agreed upon in the iPod summits was implemented, namely increasing the money from 10 billion to 35 billion. And when it was released in the last financial, in the last quarter, the supplementary budget indicated that the 35 billion was being released for political parties under the iPod framework. I think the use of the word iPod framework in the supplementary budget caused some confusion. The Minister of Finance released 23 of the 35 to the Electoral Commission. So when the Electoral Commission received this money and saw that it was written on 35 under the iPod framework, the Electoral Commission does not know iPod because iPod is, a mem is, is created by a memorandum of understanding. So the Electoral Commission wrote back to the Minister of Finance and the Attorney General to get clarification on how we should proceed with this money. And the advice from the Attorney General was, the law is clear. When that money comes, you have to share it in accordance with the numerical strength to all the political parties with the representation in Parliament, and those are seven as we speak. So the Electoral Commission went ahead to distribute the money in the way that you have you earlier on described. However, let me point out two more things that are important for this conversation. During the last, during the financial year 2020, 2021, 15 billion had been released to political parties. And because the law said that in the year of elections, money should be shared equally, the expectation was for that all political parties with the representation in parliament, namely the five DP, UPC, NRM, JEMA, and FDC, were expecting to get equal share because it was an election year. The Electoral Commission did not do that. Instead, it went ahead to share the money in accordance with numerical strength. So it caused a lot of uh, anger and disturbance in the political parties, to the extent that in the March 2021 summit, it was raised to the president in his capacity as a chairman of the iPod summit and chairman of NRM that the spirit of iPod was being undermined because what was agreed upon is never implemented and even what the law provides is ignored. For example, why didn't we share money to political parties equally in the last election? And the president promised that they were going to have a supplementary budget and when it comes, they'll begin by paying back those areas to the five who missed out during elections. So when the 23 was divided according to numerical strength, it again created disharmony because some people expected it to be shared, to have some areas from it, to be shared equally to answer the mistake that was done during election time. So that was not done. So we have recently had another meeting. On the 9th of February, there was a meeting between the president and the secretary generals of the political parties. The president in his capacity as the chairman of the iPod summit and the political parties. And this issue was raised again saying, Mr. President, money was released in accordance to what we had agreed, agreed upon in iPod in the supplementary budget. It was given to the Electoral Commission and the Electoral Commission used a formula that we've always complained about. And number two, even the areas you had promised to give political parties that were in parliament at the time of the last election was not realized. Now, because of that discussion, two things became clear, that there will be a need to amend the law to provide for that new formula into the law, so that it is clear, so the Electoral Commission can know what to do. But number two, there was a question of now, what do we do to political parties who are not interested in our conversations here that come produce these results, yet seem to be the biggest beneficiaries? Now, in that regard, the President made a proposal that political parties who are not within the discussions should not even benefit from it. But that was his proposal. 
It has not been yet adopted by everybody else. And in any case, it is the Parliament of Uganda with a mandate to make laws. So when that time comes to amend the law, we shall hear the debate and the Parliament shall take a decision. But let me make three, two things clear as I conclude. All political party funding, introducing it into the law, increasing the amount available, and the modalities of how it should be distributed have been discussed under the umbrella of iPod. However, the beneficiaries of this money are dictated by the laws of Uganda, namely the Political Parties and Organizations Act. And as far as that law is concerned, it is all political parties with the representation in the parliament. It has nothing to do with whether you're a member of iPod or not, because iPod is not mentioned in the law, at least not now. So when you hear President Mao calling this money iPod money, I think what he means is that this money was agreed upon, increased and, uh, 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 through iPod frameworks. Because the law does not talk about 35 billion. The law talks about public funding. The 35 billion was a result of discussions in iPod. But the fact that NUP is benefiting from it is also correct because the law says all political parties with representation in parliament. Until that law is amended, NUP is a, a, a right beneficiary of this money. It is only unfortunate that for us as facilitators of the dialogue, it would have been better that all these people, instead of quarreling on social media, they came back to the dialogue table and discussed these issues because it is better. It is better politics, it's better for our country. It is better for the health of our politics. It is better for all of us if we can have a civilized way of discussing these issues as opposed to throwing mud at each other in public spaces. So for me, from the side of the iPod Secretariat, I hope that sheds light on what the question is. Frank, you have really, really uh, uh, done justice to bring to light some of the things behind scenes that happen that bring us to the current debate in public. But, but let me bring in here, Michael, I, I want to understand where is NSCF, National Consultative Forum in all this? Frank has talked about the history, the discussion, and how it did eventually graduate into public funding of political parties. But where is NCF? a body that is constitutionally um, in place in, within, within this whole mix of public funding. Uh, thank you very much, Ndugu Henry. I hope uh, this time around you are getting me clear. Do you hear yes, me? Hear. I can hear oh, you. Proceed. I want to first of all thank Ndugu Frank for his humble submissions and uh, all of you members who are online. Two things. One, Whereas I do agree with all that Ndogu Frank has raised, I wanted to point out on the environment much earlier that because of the legal notice number one when NRM was here, government envisaged that in order to have multi-party dispensation proceed here, there was need to bring all political parties together and therefore need to formally have an institution called National Consultative Forum, which under Article 71.2 of the Constitution brings about the component of uh, a National Consultative Forum. We went ahead as NCF to ensure that in order to operationalize NCF, there was need to have a few aspects of funding political parties and in that regard, we specifically pushed government to recognize all registered political parties. And this is why Section 14A of the Political Parties and Organizations Act captures not only funding political parties because of their numerical strength in parliament, but rather appreciating that all registered political parties in Uganda should be given money even to run administrative costs. Michael, and Michael, you, uh, Michael, just a minute. Yes. Uh, according to Frank's account, um, um, the discussion, because uh, iPod, I think, started around 2010, if, I'm, if I, I get your account right, and the yes. discussions to finance political parties. So when did NCF come into play? Uh, now, way back before, you will appreciate that NCF was launched 
in uh, October 2010. And the idea was that government had it in mind that there was need to bring harmony in this country by regulating and having all registered political parties. And Frank will agree with you that way back there was a, a benchmark in Ghana where we wanted to go and study how that this system worked. That was also due in consultation with NCF. Apparently, I am not disagreeing with Frank. I am saying government had intention to make sure that all registered political parties are brought together in a forum called NCF. And went ahead actually through the Attorney General to make sure that the Political Parties and Organizations Act operationalizes the aspect of funding all registered political parties. And that's why I'm drawing the aspect of Section 14A, Section 14B, and Section 14C, which talks about numerical strength. Apparently, IPOD has done a very good job by trying to reinforce the component of Section 14A and B, which apparently was redundant because government or political parties that have representation in parliament were the only ones benefiting and therefore bringing this harmony within all the registered political parties. And because of that, a summit took place. IPO did a good job in 2019. You recall vividly in that summit, we had issues to do with the FDC. They thought IPOD was wasting time. We had issues, but because of the good negotiation of uh, IPOD, that meeting took place, courtesy of the diplomacy of Honorable Jima Kenna and Mao by then. We had to sit in that summit. In that summit, a milestone was arrived at. For example, agreeing to increase the money from 10 to 35. That was a good milestone. However, do not try to say that before iPod came, government did not think about funding all political parties. And that's why I've quoted that law. iPod played a big role of making sure that that law is actually looked into. And iPod did a, a good job by networking with government to see that di that dialogue takes place. And apparently, we are seeing a situation where other political parties, iPod has even been agitating for them. The difference is that government had this in mind way back because of the legal notice number one, which was restricting everybody else to a single multi-party system. And they had to show that there is a law which helps all the registered political parties in Uganda so that we move in harmony. However, as NCF, we have been having a challenge each time other political parties without representation come to parliament, I mean, uh, come to NCF, as Frank has in, he, he indicated. They always say, why are those ones only recognized? And that's what iPod was trying to chew in that dialogue, that let's work with everybody else on board even if this law is like this government has been reluctant in uh, uh, financing other political parties without representation. So that is the crux, that is the area. And I, uh, Frank made a very important aspect that electoral commission in the laws of Uganda does not recognize iPod for a simple reason that iPod was created by a, an MOU, whereas NCF is a constitutional body which has been there and the, this money would have even gone to iPod directly, for example. The, the question is that it couldn't go directly to iPod. He had to come to electoral commission because it must be regulated here. So that is the crux of the matter. Felix. Thank you so much. Um, Henry, let me bring you in here. Uh, and, and I want you to help me because, uh, and Frank talked about it, the president raises a concern but we all know sometimes when the president raises a concern, it's quickly followed through that those who do not participate in the iPod uh, space should from public funding of political parties. And we know very well that no has officially come out of this state itself not to be part of the iPod space. What is your take? What do you read into this? Thank you very much, Felix. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you ask a quite an interesting question. I want to argue that uh, even when 
Uganda returned to, to what they called on paper multi-party uh, political dispensation. The country in practice remained under single party rule, which is why what we are seeing today is something you can call uh, in the discourse of uh, uh, multi-party dispensation, is something you can call uh, a dominant party system. Dominant party system where the party in power dominates political space, dominates electoral space, and seeks to control the domineer over the others. Now, under such a situation, I wouldn't be surprised to, uh, to argue, I, I, I mean to, to learn that uh, behind the curtains, the thing behind the thing uh, under this funding would be also to help government uh, strengthen its uh, handle on, 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 on these political parties, make sure they are kept in check because can you bite the hand that feeds you? But that said, so when the president says, uh, when Noop comes out and says, look, we are not joining iPod, because then we are going to subject ourselves under your control, um, but again goes ahead and takes the money and the president presupposes otherwise, it speaks about the lack of clarity over this money. I know that in other electoral jurisdictions, when they have a political party uh, a law that speaks about, among others about things to do with the public financing, they have gone ahead and, and developed regulations in Uganda. The Political Parties and Organizations Act does not have regulations that, you know, that, that guide on, 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 on how it should be implemented. And so um, for a president that wants, that, that sprinters over a party that uh, is, wants to domineer and dominate political space, you would, do, you would not be surprised that that is uh, his opinion is uh, uh, with regard to amending the law uh, to make sure that if you're not a uh, part of iPod, you don't, uh, you, you don't get benefit from this money. But I think also the bigger question for me as a citizen is, <clears throat> we have been financing political parties as taxpayers since two, financial year 2015-2016. My interest is in how is this money regulated? How is it account utilized? How is it accounted for? Is it clear? Are, are there clear accountability guidelines in other countries, in other jurisdictions? If you look at Botswana, look at Lesotho, you look at Tanzania, there are guidelines. For example, you cannot commingle this money with other monies. In, in Uganda, there's no such a requirement. Okay, all the political parties have to do is to present details of their account and who are the signatories and the electoral commission who shall wire money. We don't know whether this money is audited. And this money, as always, comes in the form of arrears. The financial year started in July 2022, I mean 2021. The money is released seven months into the financial year. Now, of course, you would imagine it's going to finance also activities that, are, that, that have been implemented since July. So you, we are going to see political parties are in a situation where they are going now to be paying arrears. As in any situation when uh, areas come into the picture, uh, they are always surrounded by, by some form of, uh, of uh, vulnerability to abuse. The political parties, none of the political parties that have been checking since morning on their websites. None of them has ever gone ahead to publish how they utilized the funds they received last year. So the lack of accountability and transparency in utilizing this money and the lack stay on the part of the Auditor Electoral Commission, on the part of the Auditor General, on the part of the Public Accountability, the, 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 the Public Account, Accountability Committee of Parliament to even question how this money is utilized should be, is the major concern for me. But as I conclude on this point, I think it's also improper for uh, uh, a political party called NOP to not uh, 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 register and become an enroll as a member of iPod and then go ahead and take this money because uh, it's at this level that we want them to demonstrate their credentials in terms of political tolerance, in terms of seeing the bigger picture. For me, every time I hear the arguments, 
I, I think that the, the political party, no, is, is thinking that uh, uh, Uganda, the, Uganda starts and ends with the regime of Mr. Museveni. For a party that wants to, 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 to be seen as, uh, as the future of this country, uh, considering the number of young people that subscribe to its membership, we want to see them looking at the bigger picture. And you see, sometimes the future may mean, the bigger picture may mean that you can actually sit on the same table with your enemy. You see? Because you see, they are failing to... to, 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 to I, 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 and I don't understand why they are so much obscured by, by, by the, the, the man called him seven. Because Uganda is bigger than him seven. Uganda is bigger than the regime. We would want to see dialogue because none of us would want to go back to the, 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 the mayhem that the country went back or uh, passed through. Uh, thank you, Felix. Thank you, Henry. Um, um, let's go for a break. But when we come back, um, we'll uh, continue with the discussion, looking at the modalities in case money was to be channeled through iPod, what are the legalities around it and the modalities? Let's go for a break, and then when we return, we continue the discussion. Hey, what are you, what are you? Hey, why are you running? Ah, okay. <laughs> that sounds so crap. When are you leaving my house? I think you just give me one month. Huh? Just one month, I, 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 I strategize and, and, and when I'm able to, to relocate my family. Right. Hmm? I have given you more than enough time. Oh. So your problem is relocating your family? No, I need to relocate them, but also, of course, of course, more time. That the can be, is that can be handled. Time. That should be enough to settle you down. Anyway, thank you. What is he doing in my home? I own this place now. Huh? Madam, you have three days to vacate. What is the meaning of this, Nathan? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Beatrice. I, 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 I've sold this house. Without my consent? I'll fight this madness. No, 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 Beatrice, please. Beatrice, please, please. Please, Beatrice. That, that man is very connected. Very powerful, please do. Let's not go there. Besides, we have, he has given me a, a, a check. We can start from here. We can really start from here. But why? Why would you do such a thing? <sighs> Beatrice, I had I, I, politics, campaigns. I had to, to, to I, I, had, I had to use, I, I needed a lot of money to, to, to remain in the race. You borrowed money from this money lender to run campaigns? Hmm. Didn't I warn you from taking such a move? <laughs> we are unnecessary. Ah! This doesn't concern you. But I needed to save our, our parliamentary seat. But you still lost. However much we invested. I'll start from you. We are worth the five million? Only? Hey, it receives. It receives. In politics, you, you fall and rise. You fall and rise. You can lose other extra. So I believe you will rise again. I, yes, I can, I can win again and become a parliamentarian and, and, and put my, back to, my, my life back together. You, you, would you write another one? <laughs> uh. Hey, Beatrice! Please, Beatrice! Please, don't, please, please don't leave me. Leaders like these are highly susceptible for political corruption and will not be service delivery oriented. Contribute today at www.politicalfinanceafrica.org slash donate. Welcome back from the short break. Uh, we are still watching and following Actfilm Talks and we are discussing iPod and the rumblings on public funding to political parties. And before we went for a break, we were looking at um, um, the, the genesis of all this um, 
where do we place, um, how did we even arrive at the point where we are financing political parties using public resources. And with me uh, in the studios, I have Mike, Michael Orash Osindo, who is the cabinet member of UPC party. And also with me joined, I have Frank Rousseau, who is the country representative for National, for Netherlands Institute for Market Democracy, and I did the, and the hosts today in the, in the today, today in the party organization for dialogue, iPod, which is part of the questions that we are discussing. But I also am joined um, by Henry Mugusi, who is the an electoral democracy expert and also the executive director for Alliance for Finance Monitoring Action. Let me come to you, uh, Frank. Uh, um, when you were sharing, because I, I, if I remember correctly, you talked about the the agreement of the thirty-five billion that uh, seventy percent um, goes to. To, to, to the 15 percent those the 15 percent are supposed to go through um the ipod structure and help me understand because my when you look at the ipod structure it's not a legal entity it's just hosted by nimd so um what does it what does it require legally to have money channeled through ipod as a structure that is not a legal entity. Would um, also the possibility, probably, if it is being um, hosted by NIMD, then probably money is share comes is channeled through NIMD. But also, what does that mean in terms of the legalities around that, especially concerning public funds? Let me say that. Uh... Just to clarify, Article 72 of the Constitution really talks about the right to form parties and political organizations. But the establishment of the NCF and all laws related to political parties and their funding is really spelled out in the Political Parties and Organizations Act. So NCF is actually a creature of statute, and namely the law is the Political Parties and Organizations Act that seeks to implement the aspirations of Article 72 of the Constitution, just to add to both clarity. Now, the question you ask about uh, iPod funding is very interesting because, as you know, since iPod was formed in 2010, it was formed with the support of the Netherlands Institute for Multiparty Democracy. So political party leaders reached out to the Netherlands Institute for Multiparty Democracy in the Hague and said, you do this kind of work in different countries, helping political parties work together. Can you come and help us set up a dialogue platform in Uganda since we are now moving from movement system to multi-party? So when we help them set up this inter-party organizations for dialogue, which is an agreement among political parties with the representation in parliament, they say that we need a facilitator we need some sort of somebody to host us, some a facilitator, somebody to host us to give us a legal, to give us a legal entity through which we can conduct our business. So for the last 10 years, NIMD has been providing that secretariat. But as you know, there has been a number of uh, sensitivities. Some people have been saying that for how long are we going to be hosted by an international NGO? Why don't we? become an independent entity? Why don't we run our own affairs? Because when you are hosted by an international NGO like us, you will have to follow certain frameworks. For example, there is the rules governing donor architecture, there are rules governing, there are things which we are no, uh, no go areas for us, for example. Uh, there are standard rules that we have to engage when we're dealing with the dialogue. It has to be inclusive, it has to be fair, it has to be transparent, it has to be follow a certain mechanism. So there is a there's a, a role played by the hosting organizations. So there's also been a thought of can we evolve iPod and become, so that iPod can become independent or have a legal status of its own? Can we register iPod so that it becomes a legal entity capable of receiving money and discharging its own affairs? That was one thing. That debate has been going on in iPod. But secondly, there is the fact that beyond the public funding that is available for political parties to run their affairs that goes through the Electoral Commission, we have been using 
we as the hosts of the iPod Secretariat have been getting donor funding to support different aspects of political party life and organizations. For example, we believe that political parties need to have strong policy platforms. They should have strong manifestos. They should be able to be distinguished on a policy from a policy platform. We should know what DP stands for, what UPC stands for, what NRM stands for, what JEMA stands for, PPP and NUP. The citizens of Uganda need to know the ideological foundation of these different political parties. So it's important that we train and help and equip political parties to become ideologically and pol policy coherent policy-wise. Number two, these organizations need to have strong structures. They need to have working women's leagues, youth leagues, uh, policy organs, etc., etc. All of these, as you know, for the 20 years of abeyance of political parties, many of them were left in very weak states. So there's a lot of training, there's a lot of peer learning. We sometimes have to take these leaders to other countries to learn from their peers. There's a lot of work around dem democratic culture and de leadership development, especially for the young leaders. Our parliament is full of politicians who are there for the very first time, having been doing different things. So in the airport secretariat, we have been running a lot of capacity building programs using donor money. These capacity building programs, the money we get for this, uh, we, give, we offer this help in kind, this support in kind, and it goes equally to all our member political parties. So there was a question that the day the donors stop funding these activities, what is going to happen? It is again a certain background that in the iPod summit of 2019, and also the, the, the earlier one, where there was a question of should we begin looking for alternative funding to continue this important work beyond the dialogues that helps our political parties become stronger, that is done through the iPod Secretariat. That is the thinking behind the 15% they want to allocate to iPod Secretariat. Political party capacity development initiatives, things that bring us together. If the donors stop funding dialogue, how will the dialogue survive? If the donors stop funding political party capacity support, how shall it continue? How do we sustain the work that has already been done? So that is the idea. So on the question of the legalities, there were two thoughts. One of the thoughts were, we do, we, 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 we put it in the law, and I think it's going to be considered in the amendments. The other was saying, no, we register iPod as a legal entity, maybe as a trust, maybe as a company limited by guarantee, maybe give it some legal entity so it can have a, run its own affairs, have its own board, have its own, and then run its business. All these are part of the discussions that are going on as we negotiate a new memorandum of, of understanding for the next iPod framework, which I think will be launched or will be signed off sometime next month. But the whole idea is to free iPod from 100% donor dependence in terms of the activities of political party capacity support, of supporting delegates conference, of all those other things I've described. So that is the reason why they said we should put 15% for those joint activities that are conducted by the iPod Secretary. That was the spirit. Now, the mechanics of it is yet to be uh, fine-tuned. It could take the position of a statutory body, but that would be that would be a repetition or, uh, of already what has been done under NCF, which may not be necessary. It could take the form of registering another legal entity and have, uh, have it its run its own affairs, as long as they put up a governance a framework that is, is 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 workable. So that is the background. I hope that it helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 really, really, really have clarified how we arrive at that. Uh, let me bring in here and do Michael Simbe on the issue of NCF now. Um, looking at what's happening between um, Mao and No, at some point it was Mao and FDC. What is what role can NCF play, um, um, especially? when you have political parties at loggerheads? Just before I go on that aspect of what role NCF can play, uh, give me a minute to reflect on what Henry mentioned earlier. Henry talked about aspect of accountability. Uh, and I wanted to put it, uh, do you get me, Ndugu Felix? Yes, proceed, proceed. Uh, Andre raised the component of uh, accountability, and I wish to be on record that uh, all political parties that have been receiving monies from uh, Electoral Commission under Section 21 
of that political party and organizations act electoral commission regulates them under compliance and most of them who do not account actual electoral commission has been uh, having issues with some political parties and there is accountability there is a channel there is a system where political party actually account if you don't electoral commission has capacity even to close you so accountability in as far as i'm concerned especially in upc is very consistent there is there is no gap as henry thought that maybe the challenge would be is upc up to date in terms of filing annual returns because there's been a problem across all parties we are we are, we are for example uh, i am comfortable and confident of categorically stating that all the monies that upc has got who have been accounting and the electoral commission has not raised any matter and before they release to you any money you must show cause that you accounted for the preserved money the, the the system is very very clear they can't release any more money before you account for the previous money so that has been going on very well but secondly i wanted uh, to touch something a little on ndugu frank i uh, totally agree with ndugu frank however ndugu frank understands very well that the aspects of operating ipod ipod has benefited political parties especially those who are in parliament but to have it remain in that laser fair aspects of not legalizing it and having it registered has been a gap and that's why this money is they had to think about switching it to electoral commission instead of directly because the legal status of ipod up to this point we are speaking is that they needed to speed up the aspect of registering it so that they have an account number like ncf government normally gives ncf 500 million per month they channel it to our account number and we manage it from down there apparently if ipod is legally registered they will find that these aspects of this confusion would not be there and on the other hand it affects all of us political parties i want to urge into Frank that way back when we were still pushing frank came in and one of his agenda was to make sure that this entity called ipod is registered i think there is, there's been a long time without achieving that it would be very important for purposes of accessing further funds and the no sane government can proceed and actually just release money when there are issues to do with other parties international or otherwise funding ipod so it would be important uh, my brother frank because your effort has really helped political parties i recall in the upc the, we got furniture and so many things cut us off that ipod ipod has done something but can we go ahead and have it formally registered so that it has an entity right now 10 billion shillings is sitting somewhere even don't know where it is that money should have been in the ipod what but because of that gap there is need to close that gap as we continue way forward you began with the negotiation but there are gaps i say this with very good heart because ipod has supported many of these political parties i personally inclusive so it is important that as we push government for this money we also first realign the registration of ipod as a legal entity that would be very very important now back to mao and the uh, no uh, ncf is a, uh, an entity whose mandate among others is to have aspects to do with the dialogue uh, as you speak now a meeting is going on in the ncf where we are positioned ourselves and uh, fortunately or unfortunately noob is represented in ncf we want to seek an agenda of seeing how to have peaceful coexistence between noob and the dp and any other party because that's the mandate of ncf to make sure that this dialogue promote peaceful coexistence so we shall endeavor in ensuring that we we chip in in that structure Nubu, Nubu, does ncf have powers to to put errant parties in line apparently if you may be aware the president assented to a bill that mandates ncf through the uh, the, the code of conduct to regulate aspects do with that recently just last year the president assented to that bill and now that is what we are using to make sure that when we reach in a scenario like this which is uncalled for we sent a diplomatic structure like ncf to try and uh, put them together but at times 
the reactions are really not expected like uh, what we are hearing is not good but it's a challenge to us to make sure that we address that and we are working as we speak right now there is an agenda on the table in okay. mcf to try and address that all right thank you um you can be part of these discussions by going on our social media platforms and you can type your comment type your question and we can get back to you we'll be really glad to get back to you let me come to henry uh First of all, these public exchanges on, that are ongoing in the media, um, especially around sharing money, um, they tend to confirm a long-held public perception that political parties, especially in opposition, are in it for the money. What is your take? I think you are right. Um, uh, as a country, we seem to be suffering from a very serious uh, leadership crisis. Because uh, it's in, in times like this that uh, people get to uh, uh, showcase their leadership credentials. What we are seeing in terms of exchanges between uh, political party leaders and the developments also in parliament and so on is a clear demonstration that uh, leadership is a problem. Um, when, 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 when you uh, 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 become a leader of a when you are a leader for a party that aspires for political leadership, you are expected to demonstrate by what that you can transcend trivialities and trifles. But for, for, for you to be consumed in, in, in such small uh, squabbles uh, is really regrettable. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, the, 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 I think the learning from here is that uh, we have very weak political parties. And some of these political parties have, uh, in a way, one way or the other, failed to connect uh, with the aspirations of the, cities, the people they want to lead. And uh, we, we, which is why you wonder why uh, a political party can have uh, 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 existence and fail to convince members to support it financially or otherwise. If we can contribute money uh, to uh, uh, colleagues that are conducting weddings and funerals and so on, there's no reason why we shouldn't be, be making contributions to our parties if they resonate uh, with our ideas and aspirations, which they are not demonstrating for now. For a political party to 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 be in the place, and 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 you don't see an agenda in terms of what they intend to do uh, between elections, in terms of uh, how they intend to finance it, in terms of uh, of uh, grooming leaders, in terms of putting structures, even when, uh, as we have learned, the uh, NIM would be um, has uh, uh, okay via iPod has invested money in benchmarking even when they come back you don't see these learnings you know uh, 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 you, you know uh, running through so I, I think political parties have to do more first of all cleaning up their houses so that they can cease to be uh, vessels uh, run by individuals and they get to be owned by the bigger citizenry but also that the leaders people who are in positions of leadership are able to demonstrate uh, that they have good leadership credentials for the, for the Uganda that we want. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Henry. We have five minutes to the top of the hour. Um, um, so we are coming to the tail end of this discussion. And uh, as you conclude, uh, Frank, you talked about uh, political parties uh, under under the iPod summit, where it, they agree that, uh, on how the money should be shared. And, and, and you see on two occasions, the the formula applied to share that money brings issues. So two questions in there as you conclude. One, uh, are the, the discussions, are the recommendations in the iPod uh, summit binding uh, that um, there are consequences for if they are ignored consistently? Then also two, as, as you answer that question, is um, what would you be, be your best recommended approach of, of the way we should finance political parties when it comes to actually the mechanism of sharing these resources. What should you recommend 
should be done. Uh, thank you very much. This has been a very good discussion and I've really enjoyed it and I really thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, I think that uh, on the issue of uh, binding resolutions, as you know, IPOD is, uh, is formed by a memorandum of understanding. A memorandum of understanding in uh, legal terms is really a gentleman's agreement. It is built around goodwill. And I can tell you that sometimes in politics, goodwill can even be more important, can even have bigger power than the force of legislation. Because goodwill uh, is closer to legitimacy. You see, if you want to run the affairs of your country well, and you are really saying you're putting your country first, it is important that you demonstrate leadership by exercising goodwill and utmost good faith. So the things that are discussed in iPod, to be honest with you, are resolutions made out of goodwill, and we use persuasion and engagement to get results. And it is in that light that I'd like really to say to the leaders of NUP that I think that they are, there is a big opportunity they may be missing by refusing to be part of these engagements. I know that the reasons why they are keeping away are legitimate, they are upset for legitimate reasons, but I believe that the reasons which they are keeping them away should actually be the reasons to put on the table as we proceed to build a better country for all of us. And I think leadership demands that they should rise to the occasion and face their opponents in the face and put these things for the record of history on the table so they can be discussed. Now, in terms of equitable formulas for uh, political party funding, I had a comrade uh, or Cindy, and I've had many people even in the NCF raise a question and say, why do you give money to only political parties in parliament? Because the law says only political parties in parliament. But is this fair? If you look at section 14, it talks about political parties with representation in parliament. I think there could be more equitable formulas if we learn from other countries. There are other methods in which we can see how to give, uh, spread the limited resources available for political parties in a manner that is equitable, but also that is designed to generate results. We also don't want to create a business out of forming of political parties. Because if you just say there's this money available as long as you are registered, tomorrow you may get a thousand political parties. We know that in Ethiopia, for example, it has about 200 political parties, or even more. We don't want to enter into that kind of political party traffic jam. But at the same time, we want to be a little bit fair. So we could, this is a debate, this is a question that could call for more, more thinking, would like to hear from NCF, maybe in the future if they came up with an idea on how public funding to political parties should be uh, improved, we could look at that. But I definitely believe, and I want to emphasize the point uh, that my colleague Henry has raised, that for political parties in Uganda to seem to purely base either on donor funding or on public funding in itself is not a good indictment. Because a good political party should be primarily supported by its members. Because it is pushing for an agenda for society transformation that should benefit its members. There should be a buy-in, because that is the only way political party leaders will become accountable to their own members, if the members have a stake in the party that they support. So while we talk about public funding to political parties and political party development in this country, I think we need to think outside the box and begin by thinking, are we evolving solid organizations that really are legitimately the drivers of their of aggregators of their supporters interests and the best way to do that is even to get the supporters involved in the running and funding of their own political parties but this is a question we cannot solve in a day but i like the fact that we are all thinking actively about it and this discussion is a good place to have this conversation thank you, thank so, you much. so much thank you so much uh do go michael your parting shots as we come to a close And we continue uh, calling upon Dugu uh, Frank that we still need dialogue over so many things, including political financing. We need to work together as we have been with the iPod so that we continue pushing for the national dialogue for this country because we have issues to do with the economy, issues to do with the social welfare, issues to do with how land and other things are managed here. We need to continue pushing for the national dialogue. Thank you very much for this engagement. 
Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for being part of it. Henry, your parting shots. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thought I had already given my parting shot, but let him take this opportunity. It is important that political parties get to find ways and means of, uh, of, uh, of connecting with the people they are connecting, they are pretending to serve. A situation where a political party is calling themselves farmers' party, and there is no farmer that is enlisted as a member to that party, should not be accepted. A situation where a party calls itself ecological party, and there is no climate activist in, in it, should not be uh, entertained. So let them organically connect with the people and uh, so that we can take forward, and they should also see the bigger picture. Uh, thank you very much. I can't, I can't put that any better. We've come to a close. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Henry Mugozo, who is uh, the Executive Director of Alliance for Finance Monitoring and Anti-Corruption Activist, as well as an electoral democracy expert. Also with me, I had Michael Orash Osimbe, who is a member of the UPC party and also the chairperson legal committee of the National Consultative Forum. Also to, with me, I had Frank Russa, who is the country representative of and the executive director of Netherlands Institute for Manpartite Democracy, the host to the Interparty Organization for Dialogue, a platform that brings together political parties that are represented in parliament. It's been a great discussion. We can keep this conversation going on all our social media platforms, Facebook, ACFIM, and also on our Twitter handle at ACFIM UG. Till next time, your host, Felix Kafuma. Bye-bye. Stay blessed.